A provocative new book is sparking passionate debate this week among American Jewish people and supporters of Israel. Former President Clinton is calling the crisis of Zionism deeply important. Critics say the book is deeply flawed. Author Peter Beinert is senior political writer for the Daily Beast and Newsweek. I'm pleased to have him here. Uh, can I just go first to something you just said to us at the table, that there's a report in the Israeli newspaper, Haaretz, uh, that the Israeli government has put off any attempt to stop Iran's nuclear effort by military action for at least a year. Yes, there is a report in Haaretz uh, this morning. Now, there have been lots of reports about all of this, so who knows whether this is right. But there is one school of thought in Israel that says that, if Benj that Benjamin Netanyahu is actually a fundamentally cautious person when it comes to launching wars. He didn't do it in his first term as prime minister. And actually, he's not as eager to do this as some people suspect. The crisis of Zionism addresses the question which is at the heart of Israeli-Palestinian questions, why we can't find a pathway mm -hmm. uh, to an agreement which would lead to a two-state solution. In your judgment, in this book, what's the principal impediment? I think there have been huge failures on both sides. In the book, I call Arafat's decision to acquiesce in the creation of the Second Intifada a crime, and since he was a corrupt dictator who may not have had the moral authority to bring his people where they needed to go. But I also think those of us who support and love Israel have to recognize that the continued building of Israeli settlements in the West Bank makes the two-state solution harder and harder and imperils Israel's future as a democratic Jewish state. So why did they do it? I think that just as our own government gets sometimes taken over by interests that are not serving the national good, there, is a, there are a set of interests in the Israeli government that push the settlement project further and further and further, and the Israeli government has had an enormous amount of difficulty getting a handle on it, even though many Israelis recognize it threatens what we care about most, which is the future of Israel as a democratic Jewish it, it's, state. It's also... A a hot topic here in the United States, these settlements. And, and you're a Jewish American, you're, you're an Orthodox Jew. Um, this has to be tough for you to come out there and take the stance. It's not exactly popular. How is that playing? Uh, I go to an Orthodox synagogue. Uh, we send our kids to Jewish school. Yep. Um, Look, for me, the glory of the Jewish tradition is all about open debate, uh, self-criticism, self being open to a whole range of perspectives. That's the tradition in which I was raised. And I think there is actually much more debate under the surface mm -hmm. in the American Jewish community than people sometimes than realize. People really realize. Is it just that it's tough to talk about it publicly because it isn't always well-received, perhaps take that side, or, or to even broach the subject of maybe we do need to rethink the way settlements are happening? Well, sometimes people take the view that you shouldn't air dirty laundry yes. in front of everybody else. Mm -hmm. But I actually don't think that, um, I think it actually shows what's best about the Jewish tradition and what's best about Israel, that we can actually have these public debates, both there, at Israel as a vibrant democracy, and also here. I think that's sometimes, Peter, when you need to have a conversation mm -hmm. when there is conflict. It was interesting. I don't know if you could see this, but when, before you come on, you're in the green room, and the lead to you says your work's being called courageous and honest, mm -hmm. to one-sided and immoral. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you know, it shows you, and you're, you're kind of looking up like, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, what does your mother say? What do uh -huh. your grandparents say? Because I would imagine that this might have caused some debate or controversy in your family, yes, uh, no? We have a range of views uh, in, in our extended family, and people have made those very clear to me. Uh, uh, but I was raised uh, with a, a belief that what made the Jewish state of Israel precious was that it was founded three years after the Holocaust, mm -hmm. when the stench of death still hung over Europe, when, Jew when Israel was in a battle for its very survival, and it wrote a declaration of independence that promised complete equality of social and political rights, irrespective of race, religion, and sex. That's the Israel I was raised to believe in, and that's the Israel I wrote this book to try to defend. And is it that Israel at, at risk? That Israel is at risk if Israel permanently occupies millions of Palestinians who were barred from citizenship because they are Jewish. Because that will force Israel to choose between its democratic and Jewish characters, and nothing would be a greater tragedy for Jews at this time in history. There has to be a two-state solution. There has to be a two-state solution if Israel is to live up to its own founding principles. So do you believe that the American Jewish community has undue influence on the uh, President of the United States? No, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that American Jews are very, very active citizens, but I do sometimes have questions about how our organized community d interprets what pro-Israel is. For me, pro-Israel, I define pro-Israel the same way I define pro-American. Pro-American is what is in line with the principles of our Constitution and Declaration of Independence, not what our government does. And that's the way I would define pro-Israel as well. 
All right. You have a chapter in the book called The Jewish President. It's, it's a very interesting chapter. Uh, I think Obama was more influenced uh, by Jewish culture and experiences coming of age politically in Chicago than any previous president. Uh, and I think that in some ways he understands a lot of what I think is the best about the Jewish social justice tradition. Thank you, Peter. Don't Thank forget you. to get your Mega Millions ticket. Okay. <laughs>